What is up everybody? Dak here with part two of the Kunai Subbox build. And as you can see, certainly a lot of progress have been made. Uh, just after I finished recording the previous video, I glued on the last side panel. Then after a lot of sanding, I was finally ready to spray paint it, so I did. And as you can see, it it's kind of it's kind of all right. Uh, this side here is kind of well, you're not going to be able to see this side once it's in the car, but these sides do look a bit better. But uh, the kunai in the game is like a gunmetal grey, so this kind of piano black look that you can see with the wood fibers sticking through. Uh, it doesn't look bad, but it's just not what the knife looks like. So I think I might still carpet it with this carpet right here, which is kind of a speckled grey kind of carpet, which once again isn't the, the flat gunmetal grey colour which I'm going for, but it is a lighter grey and it should hopefully work. And I don't want it to blend too well into the boot. But yeah, you can see it does look a bit ghetto. <laughs> So I've not made a, a ton of enclosures like this before with um, the sub being almost part of the structure of it. But you can see that, you can kind of get the idea of it now. It's hard to tell from this angle, but here's the handle. This is where it goes out at the base and then it goes back like a kind of pyramid. And just remember along this rear edge here, it's not like the knife. It's That's just to conform to the back of the seat. But yeah, you can see that the amp I ended up going with is a uh, mono clarion amp, which is 300 into 2 ohm, 200 into 4 ohm. This sub claims it's a six, claims it's an 8 ohm, but it's actually a 6 ohm. It's 5.8 ohms, so I'd call that 6. But of course, it, it's all down to the impedance curve. Uh, you can see that I've got the power. Uh, you can see that the power cable for this amp is detachable right here which is part of what he wanted was it removable he also wanted it to be compact but I, I kind of figure that as long as it's easy enough to take out when he has to he'd like an enclosure which looks good i mean i can understand that you want a, a box if it's only to be heard to be as compact as possible but when it's a bit of a feature it's the the size of it can suffer slightly now to fasten this tube to it, I originally put a bead of liquid nails around the basket right here of the sub and push it down. And then while that was setting, which it takes up to 24 hours to set and apparently five days to completely harden, um, I put these outriggers on, which I call them, which are kind of semi-structural, but also an important part of the design. Uh, that carpet, which I showed off before, instead of a speaker grill cloth, because this is just low frequency, it doesn't really need an acoustically transparent material. It just needs one which will give when the air pushes on it. So the carpet will be stretched over these faces, so it'll form the, the shape. And it should, it's pretty dense carpet, so hopefully it doesn't actually decrease the performance of it at all it shouldn't though really especially because it's got a much bigger surface area than the driver itself so to push the same amount of air it doesn't have to move quite as much and of course the amp is just tucked away in the tube right here so it's almost compact but not quite although one issue I didn't foresee before building this is now you can see right now that the amp end is touched in the ground and that's because it's unbalanced. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to have to work out a way for it to stay upright. And it is actually quite heavy, but I'm not sure if there's a lump under it there of, of this sheet that it's sitting on. But it does indeed play right now. I've got it hooked into this power supply here. So after a bit of testing, it does sound pretty good. It sounds probably about the 0.7 Q, which I was aiming for with a about a 
22 litre box. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the sound. It's not really compromising sound quality for its looks either.